Dear Cousin Bill, I'm sitting here by the radio answering your letter of last week. Glad to know you bought a place in the country. You'll love it. You asked me to advise you about putting in a vegetable garden. But Bill, that's one phase of country life that every guy just has to learn for himself and usually the hard way. So instead of giving you advice, I'm just going to write down my experience the first year I had a garden. It all started the morning I got that beautiful seed catalog through the mail, and while I was taking my shower bath, I made up a little song. Spring, spring, beautiful spring, with all the beautiful things you bring. Spring, spring, beautiful spring, tra-la-la-la-la. Well, I don't get any work done that day, but by evening, I've got an order made out for enough seeds to cover the whole state of Kansas, including six dozen tomato plants. My wife said a half a dozen plants would give us more tomatoes than we could possibly use, but I figure I'll be smart and raise a lot of them and sell them and get some of my seed money back. Well, in a few days, the seeds show up. So I dig out the spade and fork, the rake and the hoe, I throw back my shoulders and head for the garden. Spring, spring, highly, high low, a rake and a shovel, a spade and a hoe. Spring, spring, beautiful spring, as off to work we go. I hope. By supper time, I've got aches, pains, blisters, bruises, poison ivy, a nice mess of sunburn, and a permanent hitch in my get along. But I crawl into bed and go to sleep dreaming of fresh green vegetables and big red tomatoes. From then on, every morning, I rush out to see if anything showed up yet. And sure enough, one day it happens. There's a little old bean just peeping through the ground. Ain't nature grand? Yep, she's grand all right and deceitful too. Because if I'd looked around a bit, I would have seen a half a dozen beetles hiding behind a weed with their mouths watered, just waiting for that poor little old innocent bean to get big enough for them to start chewing on. Then comes the day when I rush into the house all out of breath and I yell, Honey, honey, come here quick. Well, my wife comes tearing downstairs expecting to see the house on fire and she says, What's wrong? What's happened? And I say, Look, my first radish. She looks and says, What's that spot on? And I say, Oh, that's nothing. I can cut that out. So I start cutting. And when I get done, I've got a nice little pile of red peelings and a big fat worm. Spring, spring, beautiful spring, with all the beautiful things you bring. Spring, spring, beautiful spring. Bleh. Spring has gone and summer has come. Dum dee 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 dum dee dum. Summertime so rich and green. Yep, spring goes into summer with me still fighting beetles, bugs, worms, and weeds. One morning, the kids come tearing the house all excited, and little Johnny says, Daddy, we just saw the cutest thing. I say, yeah, what was it? He says, three little bunny rabbits eating their breakfast out in the garden. Uh-oh. Well, I sneak the shotgun out the side door, and when I get to the garden, sure enough, there they are, all three of them, just finishing off my last cabbage plant. I blaze away with a gun, but the only thing I hit is four of my nicest tomato plants. Johnny calls out the back door, what are you shooting at, Daddy? And I say, why, there was a, I was a, uh, there was a mean old fox after them bunny rabbits. Summertime with all his charms, rabbits and beetles and bugs and worms, summertime so rich and green. Then comes the time when the tomatoes get ripe. Of course, they wouldn't get ripe a few at a time. Nope, they all had to ripen the same day. So I call my old friend Jim down at the grocery store and I says, Jim, how many tomatoes you want? I got some nice ones. He says, tomatoes? I've got tomatoes coming out of my ears. Wouldn't give you 10 cents a bushel for them. Well, that kind of stopped me for a minute. Then I think about the neighbors, so I call up several of them and it's the same old thing. They're all trying to give them away. Seems a shame to let good food stuff go to waste, so I says to my wife, Honey, I says, the only thing to do is can them. She takes a long breath and says, Okay, dig out the fruit jars. Well, she starts to boil in water and sterilizing the jars, and I start bringing in the tomatoes. 
And in 15 minutes, I've got them piled two feet high all over the drain board, the kitchen floor, and the back porch. We're just getting started good when the phone rings. Our in-laws coming to spend the weekend. And they say, now, don't do any cooking at all. We're bringing, we're bringing food enough for everybody. And sure enough, they bring a baked ham, potato salad, cake, cheese, pickles, olives, just, just everything you could think of. When they got it all unloaded out of the car, my mother-in-law says, and look what we've got in the trunk. Yep, you guessed it. A basket full of nice, ripe tomatoes. Well, I get hysterical and start to laugh and I can't stop. My mother-in-law looks at me and then at my wife and shakes her head and says, Drinking again. Spring, spring will come again. We'll have the tomatoes all done by then. Spring, spring, beautiful spring.